Hey y'all, I'm sugar and cake artist Shelby Bauer, and this is The Sugar Scoop. Welcome to my new series, Stories in Sugar, where we make an over-the-top cake creation together while chatting about interesting topics. Today, our topic is volcanoes. younger we went on a trip to New Mexico and we stopped by this old volcano and we drove all the way to the top of the volcano and my dad decided while my mom was in the bathroom that he was gonna take us on the hike that goes around the edge of this volcano so my mom had no idea where we had gone and I don't think my dad realized how long this hike was it was over a mile and I was young and my sister was even younger so <laughs> it wasn't a very good idea and it happened to be extremely windy that day so my dad was holding on to me and my sister and we were blowing around like crazy I remember wanting to crawl on the ground because I thought that would be safer because we were almost getting picked up off our feet because it was so windy on the top of this volcano. So by, by the time that we got back, my mom was freaking out. She was trying to get a hold of park rangers, but it was closing time so she couldn't find any. And thankfully we caught her before she called uh, the police or like a rescue team. But <laughs> that's my funny story about volcanoes. As most of you guys already know, a volcano is a rupture in the crust of the earth that allows hot lava, volcanic ash, and gases to escape from a magma chamber below the earth's surface. Earth's volcanoes are usually found where tectonic plates are separating or coming back together. Tectonic plates are pieces of the Earth's crust and the top of the Earth's mantle. Together, they're called the lithosphere. The plates are 62 miles thick and are made from oceanic crust and continental crust. Personally, I've always found volcanoes to be fascinating. It's mind-blowing that we share our Earth with something that's so powerful and dangerous. There's more than 500 active volcanoes in the world. More than half of these volcanoes are in the Ring of Fire, which makes a ring around the Pacific Ocean. I also thought it was super interesting that most volcanoes are underwater. Did you know that we actually have a personal account of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius from almost 2,000 years ago? Pliny the Younger was 17 years old when the eruption of Mount Vesuvius occurred that buried the city of Pompeii. On the 24th of August, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, Pliny was making himself a snack and had just taken a bath. He was about to get back to his homework when his mom got his attention to show him a strange looking cloud that was forming off in the distance. He went to go stand on a hill to get a better look at the cloud, which he described as looking like a pine tree. Pliny's uncle, Pliny the Elder, was intrigued by the cloud and he wanted to investigate it further. He was in charge of the naval fleet at Mycenaeum at the time, an ancient Roman port city. So since he was in charge of the naval fleet, he was able to order a fleet of ships to go check out this crazy cloud. And at this time, they didn't know that Mount Vesuvius was a volcano. Pliny the Elder actually invited Pliny the Younger to come along on his excursion to go look at the volcano cloud. Pliny the Younger actually said he couldn't come because he was too busy studying and he didn't want to interrupt his studies to go check out the cloud. When Pliny the Elder was headed out, 
he was about to go out the door, he got a frantic message from one of his friend's wives. His friend's wife's message was just saying that she lives at the base of this volcano, she's terrified, she can only leave by sea, and she needs someone to come help her, and she's begging Pliny the Elder to come rescue her. Being the stand-up guy that Pliny the Elder was, he decided he was going to turn his scientific excursion from, you know, being scientific and going to look at this cloud into actually saving people from whatever's going on since they're so terrified along the coast. So he's, he's getting all these ships together that he was going to use for scientific research and he's turning it into a heroic mission to save all these people. So on his way to save his friend's wife, he's going to pick up people in the towns along the way. So Pliny the Elder says bye to his nephew and he's headed off into the danger zone uh, like, a, like a storm chaser to go check out this volcano and save all these people. So now Pliny the Elder is on the ship with all his crew and that they're so close to this volcano that the air's thick with ashes and there's huge stones coming from the sky, coming towards their ship, hitting their ship in front of them. The ocean's going crazy. They are in the thick of it. Large boulders were falling off the mountain and blocking the shore and the sea was getting more and more treacherous. Pliny considered turning back because it was getting so dangerous and his crew was terrified, but he turns to his crew and he says, fortune favors the brave. When Pliny got to his friend's house, his friend was terrified and he did his best to calm him down. Pliny pretended not to be scared by trying to write it off as no big deal, nothing crazy is happening, we'll get out of this quickly. But he, he ends up taking a bath at his friend's house just to show how not afraid he was. After his bath, he sat down to eat with his friends and crew and pretended to be cheerful and totally unconcerned with the volcano that was erupting above them. When it got dark, they saw large flames shooting out of the mountain that was right next to them. He describes the flames as looking extra bright and scary because it was so dark with all the ashes and everything in the sky. Everyone was getting really, really scared now, but Pliny the Elder tried to relieve everyone's fears by reassuring them that the villages they could see that were on fire had been already evacuated when he didn't really know that. Then Pliny decides that he's gonna go to bed and actually sleep during this volcano eruption when he's right by the mountain. The crew said that he was sleeping so well that he was snoring really loud that they could hear him through the wall. He woke up to the room he was staying in filling up with stones and ashes. So he decides to leave his guest room that's being invaded by boulders and ashes and fiery rocks and go find where everybody else is. And it turns out nobody else could sleep and they're all just hanging out together, totally terrified, freaking out, trying to figure out what to do. As a group, they decided that staying indoors was too dangerous because the houses were starting to shake. So they decided to get away from the buildings and fled to the open fields but rocks and ashes and fire were still falling from the sky, so they tied pillows to their heads to keep them safe. They recorded that even though it was daytime, the sky was black with ashes and smoke. So they're racing back to their boats with these pillows on their heads, trying to avoid these rocks and ashes and stuff, debris falling from the sky, but when they make it back to their boats, the sea is going too crazy, the waves are too high, and they can't leave. Pliny the Elder was getting exhausted, and he drank some water, and then he decided to lay down. Then, the whole crew started to smell this terrible gas, and Pliny asked the crew to help him stand up, and they got him to stand up, and then he instantly fell down dead. 
The guess is that he suffocated from whatever this gas was mixed with all the ashes that he had been breathing in. They found his body three days later, just laying on the ground in the same spot that he had died, and they said that he looked like he was just sleeping. That's pretty much the end of Pliny the Younger's first letter describing his uncle's death, but there's another letter that Pliny the Younger wrote about his experience with Mount Vesuvius. It's really interesting, so I'll link it in the description below. Isn't that a crazy story? Can you imagine being 17 years old and your uncle is inviting you to get right up close to one of the most famous volcano eruptions in history? Realize this is the volcano eruption that buried the city of Pompeii. I really like how the ash cloud turned out. It looks so realistic. Such a great technique for making clouds out of sugar. I'll link the video where I teach you how to make clouds. I hope you guys really enjoyed that story about volcanoes. Now let's check out the finished volcano cake. you guys so much for making this volcano cake with me I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like it and subscribe to my channel I'm going to be posting a lot more of these stories and sugar see you guys again soon